see what I see? I think it's a perfect day to pick some rose hips to make some jelly. They're nice and big and plump and we've had some hard frost to make them sweet. So it's time to get them into the house and turn them into some jelly. Even injured people can pick rose hips, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> How are you feeling? I'm okay. <laughs> A little hurting, my ankle's a bit bummed, it's hard to get down the big hill. Which we won't have you do. <sighs> trying to get these rose hips in before it gets too crazy. You can see the skies are getting dark. So you remember when I took you for a ride to the spring and I showed you the crab apple tree earlier in the summer? I got the bright idea, why don't I make rose hip jelly with crab apples? Crab rose hip jelly. So we're here at the crab apple tree, we're gonna pick some and I think that's gonna be delicious. Like, look at these guys. They just look so good. Look at them all. So we're gonna get some of these picked and put them in our jelly. So we're back inside now. We got a ton of awesome rose hips and then we got quite a little haul of apples from the crab apple tree. So we're gonna get those cleaned up and into the pot and um, start with our jelly. Once again, we have our famous Fruit washer Cameron doing an excellent job of cleaning up those rose hips for us. So the nice thing about this recipe is it's a jelly, so we're gonna be straining everything out. So once you've washed your apples and your rose hips, you can actually just put the rose hips in the kettle and cut your apples into like quarters. Don't even have to core them or anything because we're just getting the flavor out of them and all that other stuff is gonna strain out, which you'll see, so super easy. And this is what it looks like. So the apples are up top and the rose hips are on the bottom, but uh, we're going to fill this up with water now and boil it down and get all the yummy flavor out of it. I'm gonna sprinkle some cinnamon on top too and put a hair of vanilla in here, like a teaspoon, just for some flavor as well. So we're gonna get this boiling. So I put six cups of water into this and we're going to turn it on now and bring it up to a boil. And once it boils, we're gonna let it uh, hang out there for kind of 10 to 15 minutes and get all the flavor. All right, so our concoction has been boiling for 10 minutes. Now you just wanna reduce it to low and it's going to take anywhere from 30 to 45 to 60 minutes, depending on how hard your apples are. Cause we wanna get our apples really soft. Um, not so soft that they're falling apart necessarily, because we don't want our jelly to be cloudy with mushy apples, but just enough so that they're able to release their flavor. These apples are quite soft, so I'm thinking I'm only gonna need probably about 20 or 30 minutes, uh, but we will see. So just kind of enough to make them soft to get their flavor out. All right, so let's go ahead and strain this out, because we just want our liquid out of this. We don't want anything else other than that. I'm gonna rinse this, uh, rinse this pot out, and then I'm gonna put the liquid back in here because it needs to boil a little bit more. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we have this strained out. We're gonna put a half a cup of lemon juice in. And then once you have your lemon juice in, you're gonna take two packages of powdered pectin and get this going, and then we'll bring it all to a uh, boil. So we'll go ahead and cut these two packages of powdered pectin. And the nice thing about this jelly as well is that the apples have some natural pectin in them. So this jelly is definitely gonna set. That's not gonna be your problem. So we're gonna stir this in and then bring it to a boil for 10 minutes. 
while we're waiting for this to boil and come look at what a pretty pink color it is now. It's really turned into quite a nice color. While we're waiting for that to boil, go ahead and get five cups of sugar ready in a separate bowl. When the time comes to add the sugar, you're not gonna want to be doing it in real time. You just want it ready. So I'm going ahead and getting mine set up into this bowl now. That's three, four, and five. We're not gonna do anything with this until this is coming to a boil, but at least we have it ready. So we'll set that to the side and now we wait. Alrighty, we're boiling, so 10 minutes and then we'll put in our sugar. Okay, the moment you've all been waiting for, sugar time. It seems like a pack of sugar, and it is a pack of sugar. Anyone who's made jams or jellies knows that they are ridiculously unhealthy. <laughs> but they sure do taste good. So I'm just going to work this sugar in because of course you want it all dissolved very well. And once it is dissolved very well, then you're going to bring it to a rolling boil for one minute. So it's thickening up here. Just got to make sure this sugar is a little bit better dissolved. And then we'll bring it to the boil. Alright, so our rolling boil is complete. We're going to fill up the jars like so. Look at that beautiful color. Oh my goodness. And actually, you know what? This batch isn't too cloudy. So that's awesome news. So then you dig your little lid out of the heat bag. Screw it on and we'll get these guys into the canner like so. I'm tipping, I'm tipping. I'll fix that later. That one's not happy with me. That's okay. There we go. All right, on to the next. Such a pretty, pretty jam. And your whole house smells like fall. You're going to get a little bit of a um, film on top of your liquid and you can just skim that off. That's your sugar. We're just going to keep on doing this until our jars are in the canner and then we'll can them for 20 minutes we'll process them. All right, we have one batch out. jam two batches uh, anyone who's made jam with me this summer knows that uh, never ever change your ratios just do one batch at a time otherwise you risk your jam not setting or I guess this is jelly you risk your jelly not setting so we have lots of nice jars here beautiful color um, I can already tell they're gonna set because I can see the consistency in my scooping cup and uh, another successful um, batch of jelly forged from our property. Pretty cool. 